Good morning. I'm Greta Bever, Assistant Commissioner for Central Library Services here. On behalf of Commissioner Brian Bannon, I'd like to welcome you, or welcome you back, to the Harold Washington Library Center of the Chicago Public Library. We are delighted to be hosting DPLA and to offer our colleagues the opportunity to participate in this important and exciting work. I know that yesterday was a day of stimulating conversation and thought. And for many who attended, it went well into the night, I know. I am glad that we have the, the, the chance today to get back together and resume that dialogue. I am also very happy for the chance to reintroduce John Palfrey, head of school at Phillips Academy Andover, and chair for DPLA steering committee, and of course, on DPLA's board. Here's John. Greta, thank you so much, and thank you, importantly, to every member of the Chicago Public Library staff and to Brian Bannon, the commissioner, for hosting us here for our DPLA Midwest Plenary. We couldn't be more delighted to be in Chicago and in this beautiful building. Um, for those who were here yesterday, we had a wonderful day of, um, uh, of work stream meetings. It was incredibly productive, so thank you to everybody who was here and rolled up your sleeves to help us figure out uh, these, uh, in these last several months of planning what the DPLA should be. And to those who were not welcome to the public plenary uh, session today, the model that we've had through the planning process for the DPLA has been just in this way, which is we've had days before the big session where lots of people came uh, and worked on specific issues, and then we've had um, these big stage events, and we are delighted to do it. Um, welcome also to everyone who is joining us by live stream uh, and by live blog. Hello out there. Thank you for uh, joining us in this virtual way. We're thrilled to have uh, so many people. More than a thousand people have been actively involved in uh, the listservs and the live streaming over the course of this project. And we know not everyone can get on planes and come to beautiful Chicago every time. So we're delighted that you're joining us from afar. And we look forward to your tweeting and blogging and uh, all sorts of other things. Send in photographs. If you are tweeting, please use the hashtag pound DPLA Midwest up here. Um, that's the sort of hash sign DPLA Midwest. Uh, and we look forward to following your comments as the day goes along. Uh, you can see from your program, uh, obviously, the overall trajectory of the, uh, the conversation. We're going to start uh, in a moment with the supporting the DPLA segment, but I want just to uh, back up and give a few moments of context before we get uh, this group of wonderful supporters up here on the stage. Um, it was exactly two years ago at this time, in fact, in October of 2010, uh, that our um, great friend and colleague uh, and in many ways founder of this effort, Robert Darton, convened a meeting, the support of Doran Weber of the Sloan Foundation um, and about 30 other people, people from foundations, people from uh, libraries, public and private, um, people like Jerry McGann, a professor at UVA, who just had an interest in trying to work toward um, a free and open public resource um, like what we have now envisioned the DPLA to be. Um, and back at that meeting, the 30 or so people came up with one sentence that we agreed upon. This was uh, Doran Weber's insight that we should push for one sentence. That sentence has remained the core of this effort, and we've, roughly speaking, built around that idea um, and brought other people into the uh, fold over the, the last two years, and um, it's really tr uh, tracing back to that moment two years ago that this conversation started. And it was one year ago today that we launched formally the planning process for the DPLA. This happened at the National Archives. We were hosted by David Ferriero, the incomparable national archivist who has been hugely supportive of this effort all the way through. And we were joined uh, in Washington by uh, many, many good friends and many of the public institutions that are represented here today, the Library of Congress, Smithsonian, the National Archives, IMLS, um, and other federal agencies in that moment stood together with many of us from the private sector and said, we want to do this. We joined uh, hands together and said, this is something that we aspire to do on behalf of this country in a completely ambitious and almost crazy way. Um, but what's happened in that uh, period of a year is we've continued to gain momentum in many ways that we will describe today. Um, this is not yet uh, something that is set in stone in terms of what we're doing. We think of it still as wet clay and very much a participant participatory process, um, but where we're headed is to April 2013. As Bob Darton says, uh, every time we meet, it's just around the corner, April 2013, um, and that will be our public launch of the project with an initial uh, version of the service and uh, a fair amount of content and so forth that will be released 
Um, so that's the overall um, arc of what we're doing. And today is a very important day. This is the last plenary session before that kickoff. So um, we need your input, we need your feedback, um, and we're well on our way toward what I think will be an exciting launch in April. Uh, with that as an overview, I'd like to welcome up to the stage, if I might, um, colleagues who are uh, going to talk about supporting the DPLA, and you have a few of their names uh, on your program, but they're actually uh, two surprise uh, people as well. I'm going to welcome up uh, Doran Weber, uh, Chairman Jim Leach of the NEH, um, Susan Hildreth, uh, and Maureen Sullivan and George Martinez are the two additional, yes please, come on up. <laughs> 